My name is Eva Jadlowska, and I am the executive director of the Python Software Foundation. The organization that's behind this event, and more generally, the nonprofit behind the Python programming language and its community. 2021 is such a unique year for many reasons, but most importantly to PyCon, it's Python's 30th anniversary and the PSF's 20th anniversary. No one can contest that those years were years of growth. In the last 20 years, the PSF supported thousands of efforts and initiatives that all helped pave the road to where we are today. The last 15 months have been different. They've been challenging, and for many, they continue to be challenging. And just like for all nonprofits, the PSF was impacted financially those 15 months. Thanks to the generosity of our community and corporate sponsors, we weathered through 2020 and continued to support the Python community in any way that we could. We relaunched our grants program to support virtual initiatives in education. We renovated our sponsorship program to draw more funding towards packaging in CPython. We learned about virtual events so our community could gather at PyCon US today. But we need to think beyond today. The next 20 years are at our doorstep and what we do today impacts how things will play out. I've been with the PSF in various roles for over 10 years now. The growth of Python's community and Python's popularity means that more support is needed now more than ever. We're against a long to-do list without the support structure in place to tackle that to-do list. And when I say support structure, I mean several things like prioritization with community needs in mind, management, resources, and all other things required for all of this to succeed. Thankfully, the PSF is financially healthy, all things considered, and we were able to take on large initiatives this year to start addressing some of those structural gaps. I'm super excited to be able to tell you about them today. First, in March of this year, the PSF hired Morgan Mayo, our first ever Director of Resource Development. Morgan's role is to spearhead financial sustainability for the PSF's programs. Second, we announced a call for resumes for Python's first ever developer in residence. This role will help our volunteers by addressing backlog and help us prioritize work going forward. Third, we announced another call for resumes, but this time for packaging, and it's for a project manager. This role will be surveying packaging stakeholders and users to prioritize work going forward and will also manage implementation of several functionalities to help organizations streamline their workflows on PyPI. Now comes the urgency of sustaining those initiatives and continuing to strengthen our support in these areas. When work is prioritized within packaging and CPython, we will need more resources to address those tasks. Some of the work will be done through collaborations with third-party contractors, and of course, the majority of the work is done with the support and leadership of our volunteers. But to have a healthy structure in place for volunteers and contractors to succeed, we still need more staff. So you may be thinking, how does the PSF get money? The largest source of revenue for us is this event, PyCon US. If you bought a ticket to attend or if you're sponsoring this event, you are helping us fulfill our mission to support Python. Additionally, the PSF holds several fundraisers throughout the year. Actually, we have one happening now, but I'll tell you about that towards the end. Um, but we also have a corporate sponsorship program, as well as looking for opportunities to apply for private grants and eventually down the line, government grants. All of these financial resources combined help us operate. Today, I want to draw specific attention to corporate sponsorships. Companies like Google, Bloomberg, and Microsoft really led by example this year. Together, these organizations gave the PSF more than a million dollars, more than half a million, I apologize, more than half a million to kick off these new initiatives this year. 
But now we have to start the discussions on continuing that funding because we don't want these roles to disappear after a couple of years. Does your organization use Python? Does your organization use PyPI? Let's talk. Does your organization have an open source office? We'd love to meet them. We understand that having those discussions internally can be challenging and no two companies have the same processes. Our staff can help by helping provide material or any data points. That said, let's take a closer look at where the PSF is today with its finances and take a look at the details um, of our finances through Q1 of this year. As a nonprofit supported by its community, it's important for the PSF to openly discuss its finances. It not only keeps members of our community informed, but also holds us accountable for our work. The columns on the left represent financial numbers through March 2020, and the columns on the right represent financial numbers through March of 2021. Taking a closer look at revenue, we are almost on par with what we had generated this time last year which is really exceptional. Looking at expenses, there is a large difference, mainly because it is way more cost efficient to run PyCon US virtually. In 2020, net income was negative around this time of year because we were in the process of canceling PyCon in person. I am happy to report that through Q1 of 2021, net income is positive. Here, we see the PSF's total assets compared between two years. Keep in mind, we are comparing through March of 2020 and through March of 2021. Even though this past year, our total assets decreased a bit due to the packaging grants that we've been paying out, um, as well as paying for operations, we are financially stable. As some of you may know, the PSF has built up a financial reserve of one and a half years of its operating expenses to support ongoing funding needs, um, especially during times of economic uncertainties. And as we saw in March of last year, that financial reserve is an absolute must. Overall, we are in decent financial shape. And I have included a link to our annual impact report if you would like to learn more about our programs and finances. As I mentioned earlier, it is super important for the PSF to maintain financial stability as it takes on three new major roles this year. With that in mind, our team put together a unique fundraiser for PyCon to highlight our anniversaries and also provide community with some really cool swag. For the first time, we are sending out donation gifts to anyone that contributes to our fundraiser this month. If you give $99 or more or become a PSF supporting member, which is $99 a year, before, March, uh, sorry, before June 12th, you will receive a shirt of your choice probably sometime um, towards the end of June, early July. These are limited edition and we will only have these available during these times. Financial stability for the PSF comes not just from donations, but also from corporate sponsorships, as I mentioned earlier. Above is a link to our PyCon US fundraiser, um, especially if you want more info about the shirts that we're offering, and a link to our new sponsorship program, which we renovated completely um, at the end of 2020. Check them out and help us spread the word. Our staff is always available to chat and answer any questions, so don't hesitate to reach out. And to reach out uh, to reach our staff that handles fundraising, please email sponsors at python.org. The PSF finances are not the only thing top of mind. Nominations are now open for the 2021-2022 board term. I've included a bit.ly link to our discourse that shares more information on the timeline and what responsibilities board directors have. If you're interested in running, please check them out. We also hosted three member meetings during PyCon, and all three were recorded. Feel free to check them out on our YouTube. I've included a bit.ly link here as well. So before we wrap up, let's celebrate some volunteers. Typically in an in-person event, I would have these awesome volunteers on stage with me, but unfortunately that's not possible this year. So I'd still like to give them recognition during my presentation.
They continue to go above and beyond in their commitment to the Python, to, to the Python community. So I really want to say a huge thank you to Abigail, Manuel, Katya, Noah, Rami, Elaine, Humphrey, and Georgie for being awesome stewards of the Python community. And I really enjoy working with all of you. Lastly, here's the PSF's general email address, psf at python.org. If you ever have any questions about the PSF and its programs, feel free to send us a note. Additionally, I've compiled a long list of ways someone can get involved, and it really ranges from all sorts of activities. So please feel free to check out this Bitly link at your convenience. We hope to hear from you soon, and I hope to see everyone in Salt Lake City next year. I hope you've enjoyed the conference. Take care. Why doesn't it roll? It's rolling. Okay. This is uh, this is the artwork that I planned on donating to the last uh, PyCon. But it's meant to go with uh, the vinyl that supposedly is getting pressed um, that uh, Barry Warsaw and a few of us um, contribute songs to. Uh, the PSF has has really helped support Pi Ladies. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the, the record of Python or Python related songs for the Pi Ladies auction. I remember receiving an email about the super secret Hush Hush project to do this and if I would contribute anything uh, of my own. Somewhere in the song there is, there is, there is a loud bell. And that was me. Um, uh, I think on a bowl, a, a big mixing bowl, I got in the kitchen. I think it was something like this. <laughs> a language named after Monty Python. I mean, you know, humor is just baked into the DNA of Python. Every language gets the community that it deserves. And, and Python must be a very special language because it has an amazing community. When I learned to program, I didn't just learn Python, I gained an entire community. When I first joined the Python community, there were a lot of folks who, uh, you know, I was afraid they would make fun of me because I didn't really know much Python at the time, but folks were very welcoming and open to uh, teaching me and, and, and guiding me, and I hope that uh, today I can kind of be in the same role for others. If I did not join PSF and Pi Ladies, I will not be able to know that this community actually helped people so much. It's, it's really okay to ask questions in, among this community. This is actually my goal to get my team members uh, to join by this year. I, I recently joined the, uh, the board of directors for the PSF and I've been uh, just really touched by how supportive folks are uh, with each other. I, I will say that it's, um, it's a really wonderful group of people and, you know, Lives are messy, and, and when things happen to the members, um, folks kind of really step in, and, and they're supportive, and I've been really touched by that. I have several disabilities, and with the pandemic, I've had like two years from hell. I have major medical problems, I've had six surgeries, all of this stuff, and the Python community has like just come together to support me and mentor me through it. it it's really felt like I would not have this experience in any other environment. Like I've had people who, oh, I know this other person who runs this other project. So they'll get in touch with me and just volunteer their time to say, okay, you can't handle everything right now because you're in the hospital. Here's what I can do here. And just the willingness to, sorry, <laughs> just because like there was a point where I thought, oh my God, I'm going to have to just tell them. I can't do this. And people just came around me and like did it because they care <laughs> about the community. And, and yeah, so anyway, sorry, <laughs> I'm like crying now. <laughs> just 
warms my heart and it's in, it inspires me it for me the community is why i am still working on python to this day so i have a lot of enjoyment with using the language um and it's given me just a new path i, I think in my life and um a new passion i would say on a personal level my relationship with the Python Software Foundation, I think, started when we um, started the discussions to have uh, one PyCon in Spain. So I was part of the organizing committee of PyCon Spain. And uh, without the Python Software Foundation, it would have been impossible, right? Because uh, the PSF can uh, give us grants and a lot of help and resources to make sure that uh, we have a good, um, a good conference. And that's when we started to discuss things with them. Uh, but also on my work as a core developer, we are in, co in co constant contact, uh, for instance, for managing infrastructure and all the things that we need to keep the language running, such as CI, uh, the servers, uh, and, and the like. So, so, and without that, it would be impossible to have uh, the language that we use today. Well, the PSF is absolutely critical to the success of Python. I see the two, the steering council and the PSF as partners in growing what, what this a magical thing that we have because the PSF is really excellent at growing the community and nurturing the community and putting on PyCon and, and things like that. And really it's looking at that from a global standpoint, you know, all the regional PyCons, all the, all, all the um, financial aid that we give and the support that we give to such a diverse Python community. And the steering council is sort of the technical, you know, leaders, like we're, we're, uh, charged with um, being the stewards for the language and the technical side of things. Python is grassroots open source. And I may work for Microsoft and other core developers may work for Google, but uh, with a few exceptions, even the people who work for, for big names in tech actually do most of their work on Python in their spare time. Uh, not motivated by the financial or technical goals of their employer, but motivated by their own sort of interest in this very cool piece of technology. And Python is much more than just a language. It's, it's a community. And sort of telling yourself that you're part of this community, that you're a member of the community and that you should have a say in sort of where this community is going, what, how this community behaves itself uh, are, are important statements about yourself and a sort of a community like Python has to have a, uh, a broad membership so we we really want everyone who who sort of feels they care about python who would rather code in python than in some other language we want you to be able to say that by by joining the psf as a member so that's the wonderful thing about this community that you don't have to be a coder to be welcome or to be, a, to be a part of it, because all skills are needed and necessary to advance the mission of Python. So I, I think that's just so beautiful. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. How do you make money if you give it away for free? <laughs> Python has infe inf infected me. <laughs> Gather round, children. I'll tell you about Python in the old days. You know, back in my day. <laughs> It's a new day, it's a new life for me. I first uh, was introduced to Python because the person I was dating wanted me to see what he did all day. And I actually, that person ended up becoming my spouse. This jacket is powered by Python and Bluetooth. I can change the colors for my phone. A few years ago, it was my first 3D printing project. Today is a PSF day. <laughs> You can have your voice be heard, uh, you can make a difference, especially if you're coming from an underrepresented background. We, we younger people, we are, we try to be a bit more bold, right? And we say, okay, so this has been done for quite a lot of time, let's change it, because this, now's the time. Well, that's about all there is, my fellow Pythonistas.